Himalayas, stronghold of spirits, home of the Tibetans, for centuries an unconquered region for the gospel. Today, the Tibetans remain one of the geographically largest unevangelized peoples. The challenge to liberate the Tibetans matches these colossal stone fortresses. Here on the roof of the world, war rages between the forces of darkness and light for the souls of Tibetans. For many years, Christian workers have prayed that a door might be opened to Tibet. A doorway of opportunity for the gospel. Such a door remains shut. In the 1950s, storms of hostility swept over the mountains. Tibetan blood was shed when Chinese communists reconquered Tibet. Over 2,500 monasteries were devastated and more than 1,000 monks imprisoned. Hundreds of thousands of Tibetans lost their lives. Tibetan culture and society were nearly eliminated. In 1959, the Dalai Lama, the Tibetan Buddhist god king, along with more than 100,000 followers, escaped to India with Tibet's culture and religion. Secure in Dharamsala under Indian protection, he set up a government in exile. Today, over 4 million Tibetans living in the western region of China continue to face communist oppression. The Dalai Lama, a spiritual and political leader, along with thousands of monks and lamas, continue to rule over the entire Tibetan Buddhist world. Today, there are approximately 5 million ethnic Tibetans living in China, India, Nepal and Bhutan. Because of its growing influence, an additional 5 million non-Tibetans practice the Tibetan form of Buddhism worldwide. Christian missionaries have faced strong opposition and have seen less than 1% of Tibetans converted. For centuries, occultism and spirit worship have kept Tibetans in bondage. In the late 7th century AD, mystical Buddhism, along with animistic tantric practices and elements of the shamanistic born religion, combined to form Tibetan Buddhism. Its philosophy dominates every aspect of Tibetan life. To be Tibetan is to be Buddhist. To them, Nirvana is a release from the cycle of life and rebirth, but a part to it is filled with suffering. Millions live in constant fear of evil spirits, special prayer offerings, prostrating to the gods, and other rituals are practiced to ensure protection from demonic attack. Efforts to somehow break free from this endless cycle of suffering and rebirth. Men and women twirl prayer wheels, confident that with every turn they are accumulating merit in this life and will obtain a better reincarnation in the next. Prayer wheels are constantly turned, each revolution a recitation of endless petitions. Tattered prayer flags flutter in the wind, decorated with mantras, hoping to be carried heavenward. A constant striving for more prayers to ascend, more merit in this life. 
but in vain. Who is listening to their endless rituals and prayers? The Lord says, They have no knowledge who carry about idols, who keep on praying to a God that cannot save. The arrogance of man will be brought low and the pride of man humbled. The Lord alone will be exalted in that day and the idols will totally disappear. Now is the time for God's people to declare war and break the strongholds of Tibetan Buddhism. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. The Lord is summoning his warriors to reach the Tibetans. Because a mere casual encounter with a Christian message is not likely to bring conversion. Long-term missionaries are needed. Tibetan Christians are calling for dedicated soldiers of Christ to help them. We need people who are dedicated, who are willing to face everything and want to work among the Tibetan people. I want to pray for the Tibetans. Let us be bold enough to exercise the power of God that is in us because the power of the devil is seen so much in the Buddhist world. So make yourself available and God is definitely going to use you and your talents. I always feel happy when I meet friends who want to work among Tibetans to reach the gospel to our Tibetan friends. If the Lord speaks to you in your heart, accept this challenge to work among the Tibetan Buddhist world. Today, new opportunities exist for Christian professionals and dedicated workers to share their faith with Tibetans. God is at work. Tibetan children and teenagers are being exposed to Bible teachings through Christian schools in Northern India. Christian radio and literature ministries are beginning in major Tibetan dialects. Others from all walks of life are being trained and sent out to work among Tibetans. God has begun to speak to his people that it's a new day for working in the Tibetan Buddhist world. He wants us to go to the restricted access areas where in many cases the average traditional missionary can't get in. Prayer and spiritual warfare extend beyond natural and supernatural boundaries, opening doors to the gospel joining hearts in reaching out to Tibetans. Let us pray for Christians, especially from neighboring countries such as India and Nepal, who can cross into restricted access countries and minister to Tibetans. Pray for indigenous churches to be planted among the Tibetans. Pray for the missionaries and Tibetan Christians who are reaching Tibetan Buddhists. Although these people have been regarded as resistant to the gospel and have been hard to reach in the past, missionaries throughout the Tibetan world has begun to feel that God is saying it's a new day for the Tibetan Buddhist world. A new day for hope and the power of God to overcome centuries of Tibetan bondage. May Tibetans find the resurrected power of Jesus at work through the army of God. An army of prayer warriors and soldiers proclaiming the kingdom of God.